Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome back to video two of our Ultimate Premiere Pro Basics course. We just finished going over how to understand our workspace, and now we're onto importing video and making some very basic edits. So let's get started with the second video. Now, in order to start editing, we actually have to have some footage to work with. So let's import some clips into our project. There's a couple different ways you can do this. So let me show you them and you can decide which one you like best. Go to your project manager and double click anywhere in the box. Now you can search your computer and find the clips that you'd like to import. Select one clip, multiple clips, or an entire folder or set of folders, and click Open or Import Folder. Now you should see that you have video files inside of Premiere. And if you imported a folder, you should see the folder with the layout inside that already existed on your computer. You can also do this by simply dragging and dropping files from your computer into this area, and you'll get the same result. And finally, you can also locate files on your computer from within Premiere Pro through the Media Browser. Now that you have your files inside of your project manager, you can select if you want to view them as a list or as an icon with either of these buttons. If you choose icon view, you can hover your mouse over the clip and preview the footage by hovering across the thumbnail. Now that we have a variety of clips in our project manager, we can organize them to make our life a little bit easier. You can place clips of different types in their own folders to keep them more organized. Folders in the project manager are called bins, and to create a new one, hit this icon down at the bottom. Or hit Control or Command B, or right click and choose new bin. Name it whatever you like and drag your clips inside. Now when you double click on this folder you can see the footage inside of it. The same is true in list view except you click this little triangle and it drops down. To rename your bin either double click on the name or right click and choose rename. Great now that we're organized let's actually start the process of putting together a video. Right now your timeline should be more or less blank with a prompt to add footage. In order to actually start working with your footage on our timeline, we need to create what's called a sequence to put our footage inside of. And a common theme that you'll start to see in Premiere Pro is that there's multiple ways in which you can do the same task. To create a new sequence, you can go to File, New, Sequence, and then you'll be prompted with a variety of other options that can fit a whole host of different types of cameras and codecs that you may have shot with, with a variety of different possibilities available for each choice. If you know exactly what you shot with, then you can select the one that applies to you. However, if you're fairly new to Premiere, chances are this long selection may overwhelm you. Another way to create a sequence is by either taking a piece of footage that you shot with and dragging it and dropping it onto your timeline, or by right-clicking a clip and selecting New Sequence from Clip. These last two options will allow Premiere to analyze your footage and to make a sequence based on the characteristics of that clip. And unless you shot with multiple types of cameras and codecs, this is my personal favorite option. Now that we have our sequence set up, we can start adding some clips to our timeline to create a video. This works as a drag and drop system, so you can actually just take clips from your project manager and place them on your timeline wherever you'd like. What can help make this process a lot easier is by taking only the sections of each clip that we want instead of adding the entire video to our timeline. To look at each of your clips in detail within your project manager, double click on it and it'll appear in your source monitor. You can also grab this blue icon called the playhead and scrub through to any point in your clip. Now if you only want to select a portion of your clip to include in the video that you're making, bring the playhead to the start of where you want your footage to be included, then hit the I key. Now bring your playhead to the place where you want your footage to stop, and then hit the O key. Great! What we've just done is called setting our in and out points. This tells Premiere the beginning and the end of the footage that we want to have included. Now we can click on the video on the source monitor, and then drag it onto our timeline, and only the selected area will be added. If you only want video or only want audio from this section, drag and drop from one of these two icons depending on what you want. Great job! To view what you have on your timeline, bring this playhead to where you want to view and then hit the space bar. Or press this play button to play footage from your program monitor. Keep in mind your source monitor plays video from the sources of your media, and your program monitor plays footage from your timeline. Let's add some more pieces of footage and start doing some very basic edits with them. And we're going to be taking a music track and placing it at the bottom of our timeline. Right now we have a few clips in succession, and they'll play from left to right exactly as they're laid out on the timeline. This means that if you have a little bit of space between your two different clips, this will show up in your final video as nothing, which in Premiere is an empty black space. If clips are placed directly against each other, they'll immediately switch from one to the other. If we want to extend or contract clips that we have added, we can do this manually from within the timeline. Hover your selection cursor over the edge of a clip and you should see this new icon displayed on your mouse. This indicates that if you click and drag, you'll either extend or contract your clip. Keep in mind that you cannot extend your clip beyond its end. 
Another key of basic edits is using different tools. Some of the most basic and commonly used tools can be found on the left of your timeline in what's called the toolbar. If for some reason you can't see this section, go to Window and select Tools. Each of these different tools changes what your mouse function does. By default, it's the Selection tool, which you'll use to move around clips, extend or contract, make selections, etc. If you need to go back to this tool, either click it on the toolbar or press its shortcut key, which is V. There's a variety of other tools that you can use, however. Likely the next most common one you'll use is the Razor tool. This tool allows you to click on a point in your video and the video will be chopped into two at that particular point. When played back, there should be no discernible difference, but now you can move the selection independently from the other. You can also extend it or contract it. Any changes that you make to this part of the video won't affect the part that it was originally connected to. By now, you may have noticed that there's these different layers above and below our footage. By default, there are three layers for video and three layers for audio, separated by this larger divide in the middle. These layers work as if you're viewing the clips from the top down. If you add a piece of footage above another piece of footage, the top piece of footage is the one that's going to be shown. But if you make this top clip smaller in size, you can see that the bottom clip is actually present, it's just being covered up by the top clip. So keep this in mind as you edit, and later on we'll go into more detail about how you can use this property to your advantage. But that's where we're going to end this video. We've gone over just a few basics when it comes to editing but we're gonna go over some more advanced editing techniques in our next video. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.